Good day, students. You're welcome to another edition of Scholars Universal Online Classes. In our business studies class for today, we'll be discussing about the topic cash book. Don't forget, in our previous class, we've been able to uh, discuss about petty cash book. And also, some weeks ago now, we discussed about legal entries. So you will need the knowledge of what you've you know, gathered, the knowledge you've gathered over time, uh, the course of uh, the class during legal entries and petty cash book to be able to you know, uh, proceed on this uh, topic. All right, so now when we talk about cash book, from the word cash and book. So cash book is usually used to record cash transactions. All right, so at the end of this class, you know, stu the student, you are expected to be able to, you know, explain the meaning of a cash book. You are expected to be able to mention the types of cash book. You are expected to record cash and uh, receipts and payments in, in a cash book. You are expected to be able to record bank receipts and payments in a cash book. And then you are expected to be able to state the differences and similarities between petty cash book and cash book. And also, you should be able to, you know, make contra entries. All right. So now, when we move to a cash book now, what is or what do we say a cash book is? So when we're talking about cash book, from the word cash book, cash book is usually used to record, you know, cash transaction. You know, usually cash book is uh, a subsidiary book. That is used to record cash transactions. Now, when we talk about transactions, you're talking about exchange of values. You know, take for instance, okay, uh, you you you, you want to get food stores. Okay, you uh, you go to the market to buy foods. Now, at, at the point when you are exchanging the food you are buying for your money, so you're exchanging values. The food you are buying is, uh, I mean, as a value, and the money you are giving them as a value. So, so at the at the point when you have exchange values, we are, we are, we, are, we are calling, you know. Uh, what has happened between uh, at that point in time transactions? So and whenever transaction occurs, it might not be you know buying goods only. It could be maybe rendering of services. Take for instance, uh, you want to transport yourself. At, I mean, at the point when when you are transporting yourself from your house to the market, you know of course probably you, you've used cab, you've used uh, maybe a motorcycle, which is the uh, which we known as Okada, or you have used tricycle, which is uh, the Kekena Pep. So. At the point when you have, you know, when you move from your house to the market, you have paid the driver. I mean, you paid the driver for the uh, transportation. So the person had rendered service. So the person rendered service and you paid. So transaction had occurred. So regardless, it could be, you know, for uh, buying product or rendering of services. So whenever transaction occurs, you know, of course, you'll agree with me that you can decide to pay instantly for, for the transaction that, I mean, for, for, uh any transactions that you carry out and you can decide to you know defer the payments that is you can decide to pay later at the future dates so at the point when you are paying instantly you know we call those kind of transactions cash transactions now at the point or at the instance where, where when you are you know deferring the payments we call those kind of transaction credit transaction now for credit transaction there are some books there are some subsidiary books some types of subsidiary books that are used in recording those Credit transaction and the kind of subsidiary books we use are, you know, we have the sales day book and we have the purchase day book and we have returning word and return out word journals. So, when we talk about subsidiary books, subsidiary books are books whereby, you know, whenever any transaction happen, the book you have to record those transaction into first. First of all, as they occur, the book you record those transaction into is what we call the subsidiary books. Another for subsidiary books is books of original entry or books of prime entry. So I'm still saying the same thing. Subsidiary books are books whereby you record transactions into first of all before recording them into any other books or before recording into any ledger. So, and I've said that those transactions falls in two in, in two places, which is which are credit transactions. And I've mentioned the books that are used in recording credit transactions for sales on credit you record in sales day book for purchases on credit you record in purchase day book, and then for uh, for returns in word that is goods that are returned back to you return in, you record in return in word for goods that are return out you you record in return out what. Now, our focus for this class is the cash book. So, for cash transaction this time around, which is transactions that requires, I mean, you know, at the points when you are, you, are, you are carrying out that such transactions, you are paying almost immediately. You are paying immediately. You are, you are expected to record those transactions in your cash book. So, whenever you are make, doing any transactions, you are recording those transactions in your cash book. And you have to know that cash book is the only is the only subsidiary book that serves the function of both you know uh, the subsidiary uh, function and also a ledger 
account it serves as both a ledger account and don't forget you know when i was taking ledger account i said ledger is the principal book of account so the the, the cash book is the only book that serves both purposes that is subsidiary books and a ledger account and it's used for recording all cash transactions that is all cash transaction in the business now cash book is used for you know cash receipts it's used to record cash receipt and payment that is whenever cash is involved whenever cash is moved whether it is coming into you that is you are receiving cash or you are giving out cash you have to record it in your cash book and the cash book is usually kept by the cashier all right so let's move to the next part of this class which are the types of cash book we have different types of cash book we have the single column cash book in single column cash book we have the double column we have the three column cash book and we have the petty cash book all right so we have been able to explain the petty cash book in our previous class which we said that petty cash book is used to record petty you know uh small or minor expenses so petty cash book is used to record petty or small or minor expenses and usually you know those expenses are paid out of the cash flows so we explained that if you want to know more about petty cash book please check the previous I mean the previous week video where we discussed about petty cash book properly. So in this class we'll be you know laying emphasis on single column and two column cash book. So in our next class we'll be talking about the three column cash book. Now you need to know that one of the major difference between you know all of these types of cash book is you know it's I mean is a factor of this the size of the organization part time. Take for instance the business I a business that is just coming up, like take for instance uh, in our organization when we are just coming up, so at the at the at the early stage the, the only medium of payment we used to okay take for instance people wants to pay us or we want to pay people we pay through cash because we're just coming up we don't even have i mean the business bank account because we're just coming up don't forget so in that case for the fact that we are using just one medium of payment that is one medium of payment, which is only cash we prepare single column cash book now for two column cash book we uh, you know at the at, 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 at you know it gets to a point when uh that, that is at a stage when the business is expanding that is, we are we registered our business now. The business now has a bank account. In that case, we now have two columns, which are cash account and bank account. That is, we can either do business using only cash. I mean, using either cash or bank. I guess what I'm saying. So that is why there is a need for two columns because for the fact that we are using two medium of payment, we can single column cash. You cannot work again. So in that case, we have to include. We have to introduce two column cash. That is. Two column cash book will be able to, you know, make me know the amount I have in as, as cash and the amount I have in my bank account. Now, three column cash book, which we'll be discussing in our next class, I would advise that you stay tuned and, you know, prepare for our next class where we'll be discussing about three column cash book properly. Now, moving to the next part of this lesson. Now, let's talk about single column cash book. I've told you that single column, you know, requires, it, uh, it's, it's talking about those kind of cash book that has just one column. And when I say one column, I'm, I mean one column for the I mean medium of payment, which is the amount. And we are using when we are talking about one column, we are using either you are using only cash or only bank. I guess it. So in that case, that is the business is not. I mean, the business is at the early stage. So in this kind of cases, we, uh, we have just one column, and that column is used to for just one medium of payment. All right. So the cash book has columns for date particular folio and amount so i'm referring to this amount when i say one column i'm referring to this amount here so just one column for amount compared to other you know cash books you know will be by the time we start uh revealing those things you 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 get to know or get to understand what i mean so for columns we have dates particular folio and amount and i've been able to explain all of these columns that is date is used to record the date that is the period when those transactions of course particular contains the details of those transactions folio is used for reference and the amount you know carries the monetary value that is the monetary worth of those transactions that has happened you must get more details about this i would advise that you check the previous video on ledger because i was able to explain all of this you know column for us properly uh, uh in the video all right so for all of these columns date particular folio and amounts we have we we'll have them both on the debit side and on the credit side we have them both on the debit side and on the credit side all right so i want us to move to the next part which is the double entry principle now if you really do not understand this double entry principle at the cost of my previous video this is another chance for you to you know pay attention now when we talk about double entry principle what are we saying now double entry principle says for every debit entry for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa 
for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa vice versa means that is for every credit entry that is if you are taking i mean if you are starting from the credits you end up uh, getting a corresponding debit that is for every credit entry there must be a corresponding debit entry and vice versa vice versa means that is for every debit entry there must be a corresponding credit entry. that is regardless of where you are coming from whether from debit definitely you have to have a corresponding credit if you are coming from debit you have to have a corresponding credit and if you are coming from credit you have to have a corresponding debit now what do we call debit entry and what do we call credit entry now the double entry further says or further says that for every debit entry that means that that means that you are receiving uh you are receiving value so that is to say you debit the receiver and credit the giver so you debit the receiver and you credit the giver you debit the receiver and credit the giver because of uh, the number of questions that we got from uh, you know from our previous class i want us to you know explore more options or more more examples to be able to illustrate you know this principle this double entry principle because if we do not understand this principle so well we might not find it easy you know to journey with me in this course so let us take one or two uh examples take for instance you know for all payments and expenses don't forget that we are talking about cash book and on the cash book we have the debit and the credit side the debit side is the receiving side and the credit side is the giving side now you have to know that for the for the fact that the credit side is the giving side so the the giving side would you know recognizes or would involve payments or expenses payments or payment that is whenever money is going out because it is the cash rule now our focus is please place your focus on the cash because it is cash rule and we have said that cash rule is used to record cash transactions so your focus should be on the cash so whenever what whenever anything happens whenever any transaction happens the question you should always ask the service what is happening to the cash with you now the first example is for rent paid now you have paid rent now the question is what what will happen to your cash or will you give give out cash or you would receive cash when you are paying rent so definitely you if you, if you are telling me that you give out cash you are right you're correct so you're giving out cash because you have paid rent now when at the point where you are giving out what would happen what would happen what do we say in our previous you know illustration we said debit the receiver credit the giver so now for the fact that you are giving out so what would happen is you credit your cash book you credit your cash book that is credit rent in the cash book credit rent in the cash book. so you credit cash book and you have said that for every credit entry there must be a corresponding debit entry now who is receiving that money the person that's receiving the money is the rent account so you debit rent account so if you understand that so well let's move to the next part which is for purchases of goods now you have made purchase of goods now at the point where you are purchasing goods the question you should ask yourself again is is money going out or coming in now i have gone to the market to purchase something now at the point when i'm purchasing at the point when i'm buying something are you collecting money or you are giving out money so you'll agree with me that you are giving out money so in that case what would you do when you are giving out money in your cash book don't forget in your cash book money is going out and because money is going out because you are giving you will credit your cash book so credit cash book then who is receiving you will debit your purchases account because you are purchasing so it is the purchase the uh, the person you are purchasing from that is receiving so you debit purchase then you credit your cash book because the money is going out don't forget our emphasis once again is what is happening to the money with you all right so i'm moving to the next part which is drawings now when we talk about drawings drawings is when the owner of the business withdraw money from the business for personal use when the, when the owner of the business withdraw money for personal use and don't forget when you are withdrawing money from personal use now the question is you are withdrawing money from, from the business for personal use the money in the business what is happening to the money in the business you know initially we had let's take for instance you had fifty thousand in the business and the owner of the business withdrew one thousand from the business now how much will be in the business now Definitely, it's going to be forty-nine thousand. Now you withdraw one thousand naira. You've taken up one thousand naira from fifty thousand, so you have forty-nine thousand naira left in the business. So the, the question now is, what has happened to the cash in the business? You've given, you've given. I mean, you gave out one thousand naira from the business. So in that case, your cash book you will be crediting your cash book again because money is going out. And who is receiving drawings? You will debit your drawings account, and. Okay, for this 
next uh, next example for purchase of asset like motor van now when you are purchasing asset like motor van now when you're purchasing asset like motor van what would happen at the point where you are purchasing motor van definitely money is going out so you credit your cash book so your asset of motor van assets are properties of the business please you have to take note of that assets are properties of the business now you are you have purchased property you have purchased a motor van properties those are your properties your motor van you credit cash book because money is going out then you debit asset account you debit your asset account and you have to take note that credit transaction whenever we are talking about cash book please take note whenever you are talking about cash book credit transaction you know you don't post them into your cash book don't forget i said earlier that for credit transactions there are some specific books that you post credit transactions for sales on credit you post it in sales day book for purchase on credit you post in purchase day book so you don't record credit transactions into your cash book please you have to take note of that because you might be asked under examination conditions that okay they could give you questions and then they will ask you that you have sold or purchased something on credit they could tell you cash if you are if you are, if you are selling on cash definitely selling uh selling goods when you are selling goods with uh, by cash what what would happen is because at the point when you are selling you will receive money so in that case you debit your cash account because you are receiving money and whenever you are receiving you said you will debit so for that kind of transaction you can post it in your cash book but for credit transaction that is you are, you are, you are selling goods to someone on credit please take notes do not post in your cash book because cash book is used to record only cash transactions all right so i'm moving to the next part which is the layout now let's talk about the layout of cash book now when we talk about the layout of cash book the first thing you have to take notes is the name of the business the name of the business has to be there okay this is as you can see this is adequately limited then the title of the account you want to prepare the title of the account should be single column if it is a single column cash book single column cash book for the month of it has to be for a period for the month of may 2007 and as you can see we have the debit we have to which is the dr on the left side we have the credit on the right side all right so the next thing is you draw your table then you label them date particulars date particulars fully amount then this is for the debit then the next one which is date particulars fully amount for the credit then your inflows which is your receiving uh side you will use to record all the money you receive and your payments are you use to record all the money you have paid out all right let's take a let's take an example uh let's take uh, an illustration so that we'll be able to understand what we are saying properly now example one Enter the following transaction in the cash book of Oladili and Sons Limited for the month of March 2017. Now, you are, you, you've been asked to, you know, enter this transaction in the cash book. So, your, your, your focus, first of all, your focus should be on the cash. What is happening to cash? Now, the first thing, 1st of March, started business with 100,000 Naira. Now, the question is, what will happen to the cash of Oladili and Sons Limited? Initially, you would agree with me when you start business with cash. The money you start business with cash is called cash capital, right? Capital. Now, the Aladdin and Sons Limited does not have any any money in the business before. Now, now that Aladdin and Sons is starting the business, he has, you know, started the business with hundred thousand naira cash. So in that case, the cash in the business will be increasing. That is, the, the business will be receiving cash. So in that case, what would happen is you would debit your cash with 100,000 naira capital. So, if you check if we check the first thing you have to take note is the name of the business which is Oladili and Sons. All right. And the next thing that you have to take note is the title of the account. Now, the title of the account is you're preparing the single column cash book for the month of March 2017. You have to take note of all of this salient point because they attract marks and also show that you have this is the debit side and this is the credit side all of these things are track smart and the next thing is you draw your table and then you you label your table accordingly all right so when we label your table you have to ensure that this amount carries the currency you are that you're given if it is naira put naira if it is cds put cds if it is dollars put dollar if it is pounds ensure you're putting your currency there all right so if you look at the question the first question says start the business with hundred thousand naira we have mentioned that when you are starting business with 100,000 naira, the business is receiving cash and your focus is on the cash. What is happening to the cash? 
Now, in that case, you receive cash, and whenever you are receiving, you said you will debit. So that is why we have it on the debit side here. That's why we have it on the debit side, March 1st, capital, which is 100,000. Then the next transaction is on the March 2nd of March, both goods worth 20,000 naira by cash. Now, the question is, when you are buying goods, what is happening to cash? Will you be giving out cash or will you be receiving cash? And when you are buying goods, you will agree with me that you are, you are giving out cash. So in that case, you have to, you know, credit. Because whenever you are giving, whenever you are giving, you credit. So in that case, what you will do is, you come to your credit side, then you post. March 2nd, purchases. How much? 20,000. So that is uh, how to, you know, do the posting. So the next one, which is the next date, 8th of March, you receive 5,000 Naira cash in respect of sales. That is, you have sold goods and you receive cash. Now, the question is, what is happening to cash? They have told you. So you are receiving cash. And when you are receiving cash, what, what would you do? You would debit. So in that case, you move to the next part, March 8th, sales. So you are receiving, you come to the debit side, you receive 5,000 Naira. So that is how you know what to do, whether you are to debit or you are to credit. And in this case, it's because it's a cash book. So your focus should be only on the cash. Your focus should be only on the cash. Now, the next date, 11th of March, pay the following expense in cash. Stamps of 200 Naira, petrol of 17. You are paying. Now, paying money is going out. You are giving. So in that case, you come to your cash book, you pay. You Because you are paying, you are giving, it has to come to your credit side. So in that case, you come to your credit side, March 11, stamp 200, March 11, petrol 17. So we move to the next part, which is 13th of March. Pay cash of 10,000 to Azan Adamu. You are still giving. You are still giving. So in that case, you come to your credit side, Azan Adamu, March 13th. Azan Adamu, how much? 10,000 Naira. So you go to the next part, March 16th. Bought a motorcycle by cash, 60,000 Naira. Bought a motorcycle by cash, 60,000 Naira. When you are buying motorcycle, what, what is happening to cash? Don't forget, focus is on cash. You are giving out cash. So in that case, you come to this credit side, March 16, motorcycle, what are you buying? Motorcycle, how much? 60,000 Naira. So we go to the next date. Please, you have to, you know, ensure you are keeping track of all of these things. Keeping track of the movement of cash. Now, March 18, received a cash loan. Received a cash loan. You received money. Now, when you receive money, what do you do? You debit. So a cash loan of 40,000 from Tokpe Aliyu. So you come to your debit side, which is this side. Now, March 18, Tokpe Aliyu loan from Tokpe Aliyu. How much? 40,000. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I'm moving to the next part, which is 24th of March. Bought goods worth 7,000 Naira by cash. When you're buying goods, what would you do? You give out cash. Bought goods worth 7,000 Naira by cash. What you do is you give out, and in that case, you come to your credit. So this is your giving side. This is your receiving side. Good. So March 24 purchase 7,000 Naira goods. So we move to the next part. March 30th, paid salaries of salesperson 20,000 Naira. So what would happen when you are paying salary? You are giving out money. So your, your, your focus is on the cash. Your focus is on the cash because that's why we call it a cash book. So you give out money. So you come to your cash book on the credit side. March 30, salaries 20,000. Now this is the end of the transactions. Now. However, you can't. You have to close your book. So, to, in closing your book, what, what would you do? You come to this credit side, add up everything: twenty thousand plus two hundred, which is twenty thousand two hundred plus one seven twenty one nine hundred plus ten, which is thirty one nine hundred plus sixty thousand. This is ninety one nine hundred. Ninety one nine hundred plus seven, which is ninety eight. Ninety eight nine hundred with twenty thousand is going to be one one eight nine hundred. Now you've added all of this. Write it somewhere: one one eight nine hundred. Now add up all of this, 100,000 plus 5,000 plus 40,000, this is going to give you 145,000. Write it somewhere too. Now the question is, 145,000 and 118,900, which one is bigger? You will agree with me, it's this side, which is the debit side. So what this thing is telling me now is, the money you have received, you have received 145,000 in the month of March, and you have paid out 118. So how much would you be left with? So take out 118,900 from 145,000, you will be left with your balance. So the balance is on the at the first of March. The balance that will remain with you will be twenty thousand one hundred, which is the difference between one uh, one forty five thousand and one one eight nine hundred. So by the time you sum up all of these twenty thousand plus two hundred plus one seven plus ten thousand plus six thousand plus seven thousand plus twenty thousand plus twenty six thousand, you will definitely have one forty five thousand. So that makes this account to be balanced. That is, this account is balanced to this account. Then you can close your account.
So your balance, the balance you have with you now will be twenty six thousand one hundred. So what is, what what this implies is that by the time you move to the next month, which is April, first of April, you are giving that the money that will be with you will be twenty six thousand one hundred. That is, you can take it to this side. Now let's move to the next part. Now we we'll move to the next part of this class, which is the next section, which is the two column cash book. Now the two column cash book I said earlier is a combination of cash and bank accounts in one book. But a combination of cash and bank accounts in one book. Now, what we are saying is on the debit side, you have column for cash and bank, and also on the credit side, you have column for cash and bank. And what we are saying in this case is whenever you receive money in or when you ever you receive money through check, because definitely when you receive money through check, you will take the check to your bank. And in that case, what what happens is your bank account will be receiving money. So in that case, what you do is you go to the debit side on the bank column and post it there. And whenever you receive money through cash. You go to your debit side again, but this time around is not on that bank column, but it will be it will uh, be under cash column. So also when you are giving money, so if you are giving check, definitely you know when you are giving check, the person will have to be getting the money from your bank account. So in that case, you go to your credit side when you are giving check, go to your credit side under bank column, and when you are you know giving cash, you go to your credit side under cash column. So that is you know that about the two column cash book so i will advise that we should pick one or two examples also under the two column cash book now we have a very good example here of uh mr dewale in the month of january you are supposed to you know post this in the appropriate account using two column cash book in the month of january please you have to take note that our focus still remains on the cash but in this time around you have to note, note that Money, my money, money is not moving only through cash, but you can use either cash or bank. So in this case, you, what you have to do is, you have to open your mind. Whenever money is going in, or money, whenever money is coming into the business through cash or bank, you are debiting it. And whenever money is going out, that is giving out. When you are giving out money through cash or bank, you are going. It's going to the credit side. So you have to take note of that. And mind you, you have to take note of this too. That there are some examination conditions that you might not be asked to, you know, prepare two-column cash book. Just look at this question. It says enter the following transaction in their appropriate account using two-column cash book. They've told you what to prepare. There are some questions that they will not tell you whether you have to prepare single column or two column. The question will just tell you prepare, open this, I uh, mean, enter the following transaction in the appropriate account. It's just like that. So you have to take notes now when you look at those transactions when you when you glance through those transactions take for instance this is cash in office you can cash in hand i mean cash in bank i mean uh the adult issue check and he paid 42 000. so you can see that there's mixture of cash and bank so in that case the best book that you can use is your two column cash book all right so to start with let's take all of these entries one after the other then we would be able to Okay, it does not stop there. Let's take all of them one after the other. All right, so for this question, the first thing you have to take note is, now the point of, you know, uh, preparing your solution for this question, the first thing you have to take note is the name of the business. And the name of the business is Mr. Dewali. Then the next is the title of the, uh, the book you are preparing. And it is, you are preparing the two-column cash book for the month of January. Then your debit and your credit. All right, so at this point, you can draw your table. Now you can see this is our date, then particular, then folio. Now, the reason why we call it two columns is because we have two columns. We have bank and cash on both debit side and on the credit side. So you label them, dates, particulars, folio, bank, then your currency have to be there, cash, then you, as soon as you're done with your debit, then you move to your credits, which is dates, particulars, folio, bank, and cash. All right. So if you look at the question, the first question says, or the first illustration is January 1st, cash in office 13,200 and cash at bank or cash in the bank is 23,750. All right, so for all of this cash that you have with you, definitely because the money is still with you, it's as good as okay, the business has those money. So in that case, it's going to be your debit balance. So it's going to be your debit balance on January 1st, it's your uh, debit balance. So January 1st, the money which is, is it how you call it your balance brought forward? Or your capital as the case may be capital usually for business that are just coming up for for balance brought over for business that have been existing and then you know you are rolling over you understand so they have this bank so in bank they had 13 two and in cash they have 23 750 
All right, so if you look at this question very well, all right, the question is saying the first entry here is saying January 1st, cash in office 13,200 and cash in bank 23,750. So, because these are the money that you have with you presently, so what you need to do is you go to your debit side of your account, then you recognize January 1st balance brought forward, balance BF. So, on the bank, bank you said, okay, it said that you have uh, 23,750. 23, then cash 13,200. All right, so we move to the next date, which is January 5. The Adobe issued check and he paid uh, 40, 42,000 right now. When an, uh, an outsider, uh, an outsider, which is the external party, is paying you, you are receiving money. And at the point when you are receiving money, you are supposed to be debiting your cash account because don't forget your focus is on your cash. So you are receiving money. But this time around, are you receiving cash or check? Now, if you notice, the Adobe is your check. So you are receiving the money in your bank account. So you come to your debit side, then you go to your bank account to post 42,000. So January 5, Adobe, bank 42,000. So we move to the next part, which is cash sales of 24,600. Now, at the point where you're making sales, you're, you're, you'll be receiving money. Now, when you're receiving the money, is it true bank or cash? It, has, it is stated here that it is true cash. So you come to your debit side also to continue card sales so it's going to be under cash 24,600 then you move to the next part it's the same thing card sales 13,850 so you continue with your sales January 8 sales cards 13,850 then we move to the next part all right so the next is paid our Aisha by cash 20,700 so what you need to do is because you're paying the focus is on cash don't forget your paying cash is going out and because it's going out you're giving it's going to be on the credit side so you go to your credit side on the cash section you go to your credit side on the cash section our Aisha uh, paid 20,700 then you move to the next part which is January 12 paid wages by check you're paying also so this time around you're not paying through cash you're paying through bank by check whenever you see check transaction you definitely know it has to you know do it your bank so you're paying through bank 51,000 then you come to your wages your credit side wages 51,000 then we move to the next part all right so i hope you understand the way we are moving if you do not understand please you might need to you know take the video over and over again please don't forget the double entry principle is you debit the receiver you credit the giver so january 14 both pens for cash so pen you have when you're buying pen or uh, okay when you're buying pen you pay cash so what you do is you go to your credit side to post that you post that on the credit side January 14 pen on the credit side then you you're buying uh you're buying pen with cash so in that case you would go to you'll be posting the five days on that cash all right so immediately after uh posting your pen okay on January 17 you purchase goods for 30,000 so usually because you're purchasing goods at the point when you're purchasing goods don't forget your focus should be on cash you purchase goods for cash 30,000 euro so what you do is because cash is moving out you go to the credit side then you post January 17 purchase under the cash column 30,000 then you have to go to the next part okay January 18 you're doing this exactly the same thing you bought another goods for cash 30,000 so also you go back to your account January 18 purchase 30,000 again then you move to the next part which is January 29 cut sales to date that is you have made cut sales what 62,950 now the point when you are making sales don't forget your focus is on cash what is happening you receive cash right now at the point when you're receiving cash what would you do you would debit your cash account so you come to your debit side of your cash account 62,950 on the cash so cash sales January 9 cash sales 62,950 then we move to the next part okay the next date is January 30 uh, you paid cash to W and LA 20,000 Naira so when you're paying cash, you're giving out cash, W and LA. So you have to go to your credit side because you're giving out then W and LA 20,000 Naira. Then you move to the next part, paid rent and cash, 20,100, 20,100. When you're paying, your money is going out. So you come to the credit side, January 31st, rent 20,100. All right. So and the last transaction for the month is on 31st of January, bank charges 1,750, 1,750. All right. So what is happening is bank charges is like an expense or charged by the bank for the service rendered uh, at the cost of the month so it's an expense so in that case 
you are giving bank 1750 and when you're giving out cash you're going to post it on the credit side to generate 31st bank charges 1750 so at this juncture so what you need to do is you need to sum up all the transactions on the debits that that falls on that bank all the transaction on the debit that falls on that cash sum up all the transaction on the credit that falls on that bank and also on that cash now when you sum up for the three thousand I mean, twenty-three thousand seven fifty with forty-two thousand. You should have uh, okay, sixty-five thousand seven fifty. All right. So when you sum up all of this, you have your your balance. You have to write it somewhere. When you sum up all of this, you have fifty-two thousand seven fifty. Write it somewhere. You have sum up all of this. Your balance write it somewhere. Now this is sixty-two thousand seven fifty. Compare your bank on the debit with your bank on the credit. Now bank on the debit will give me sixty-five seven fifty, and bank on the credit will give me you know. 52750 so definitely you know that the amount you have received in the bank is more than the amount you have paid out in the bank so what you do is you have your balance carried down on the credit side for the bank column now for the cash column if you sum up all of this and you sum up all of this now you have to compare this so if you look at this you notice that your credit column is more than your debit column so what you have to do is on this side you have your balance carried down on this side and um, now your balance carried down will be the difference of this with this and the difference of this with this so so when you sum up all of this 13 2 plus 24 6 plus 13 850 plus 62950 whatever you have you have to take it out from the submission of 20700 plus 5 530 plus 30000 plus 30000 plus 20 plus 20100 now so when you sum up all of this the difference is 6730 so when you add up all of this you would definitely get the amount to make up the credit side and also on the bank column too, you deduct the 52,750 52, from 65,750, then your balance carry down will be 13,000. So this will make up your account. That is on the bank column, we have 65,750, and on the cash column, we have 121,330. So that makes our account balance. So in this, uh, for the next class, I mean, for the next section, we'll be taking the contra entry. Now, when we talk about contra entry, what are we saying? Contra entry is when money is changing position. That is, money is moving from either from cash to bank or bank to cash. You know, in our business, take for instance, on a Monday morning, uh, we 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 made too much. I mean, too many sales that I mean, we had we had so I mean, we had uh, too uh, too much money with us that uh, we noticed that it is not safe for us to keep. Uh, that kind of money with us and what has happened is we we went to the bank to say okay we want, went we've gone to the bank to, the, to make some deposits and for that in that kind of scenario now we have we have made too many sales and then we discovered that we had some amount of money with us that's beyond what we are supposed to be holding so we have gone to the bank to make deposits in that case money has changed position but we have not spent the money that is you go to the bank okay we have like take for instance we have 500,000 naira with us we went to the bank to deposit five or 500,000 naira now the question is is the money with you like is the money with you cash no it is not have you spent the money no you have not so in that case contra entry is when money is changing position that is if you are taking money from cash to save it in the bank or you are, you are, you are moving money from the bank from your bank account to cash so it is not it does not mean that you have spent the money yet but money is just changing position so we have said that contra contra is you know is a lasting word we should that cash has been withdrawn from you know from the bank for office use or cash has been deposited in the bank or withdraw uh deposited in the bank from cash so you have to take note of that so contra is it is a lasting word now the cash book now contains both because for for the fact that the cash is moving now cash is moving either from cash to bank or bank to cash now contra entry will affect both sides of your your cash book both debit side and credit side because someone will be giving and someone will be receiving it is either bank is giving or bank is receiving or it is either cash is giving or cash is receiving so it will be affecting the both side of your cash book now take for instance money paid from office into the bank money paid from office into the bank you have your paid cash into the bank so in that case bank is receiving so you debit bank and cash is given so you credit cash that is how it works that is how it works so cash column will be credited because you are giving then bank column will be debited because bank is receiving 
and also we could have cases whereby cash is withdrawn from the bank for the, i mean for office use of course you have not spent the money yet i mean you have you've not you know spent the money yet but you have withdraw or you withdraw money from bank for office use so in that case what you would do is bank is giving then you credit the bank then cash is receiving you debit cash so let's take one or two questions let's take a, uh, an example now if you look at this illustration of Musa Adu Nigerian Limited now October first balance brought forward from the last month is for your cash you have 21,300 for your bank you have 42,000 for risk for check you have all of these transactions so let's quickly move to the solution to see how we do the posting now don't forget the first thing is you open you you tell us the name of the business Musa Adu Nigerian Limited then the book you are opening then you create your t table your t formats on the debit side you have to show us on, on the credit side you have to show us what you are preparing now the first thing you have to take note is for october 1st balance brought forward for the last month is cash 21 300 bank 42 42 000. so you come to your debit side bank 42 000, cash 21 300 that's october 1st then the sec next is October 2nd, you receive check from you, Goki, 38,000 euros. So you are receiving money, you debit it. Now, I believe you should be able to understand or you should be, you should be able to know uh, how to post now. Receive check from you, Goki, 38,000. So it's going to be on the debit side, you, Goki, 38,000. Bank, because it is check you receive. So the money is going straight to your bank account. The next is cash sales, 62,700. 62, then it's going to be on the debit side because it is. Uh, you're receiving money 62700 but it's going to be under cash all right so october 4 that's 62700 now when you make sales of 62700 everything you're receiving cash so in that case because you're receiving you debit cash that's october 4 sales so you debit cash 62700 then you move to the next part which is pay rent and check 10200 so in that case, you go to your credit side because you are paying. And in this step around, you are paying through your bank account. So you go to your credit side to post October 6, rent of 10,200. And move to the next, which is bank cash. Now, bank cash is a typical example of the you know, contract entry that I just explained. Now, bank cash. That is, you keep you, you cash in the bank. You keep them in the bank. So in that case, bank is receiving. So you debit your bank. Then you pay it your cash. 16,000 euros. So in this case, this kind of transaction will affect the two sides. Let's take the credit side first. Then because cash is giving out. So your cash is giving out. So under your cash is giving out 16,000 euros to get to the bank. So I'm not please take note of this. Whatever you are in your treating contract entry, under your folio section, you have to put your C. And also on the debit side, because bank is receiving on the debit side, I have to show 16,000 euros under the bank here. Thousand around that the bank now uh, the bank is collecting six thousand around from cash. You have to show C here yeah, because this is the contra entry. So you can see the contra entry is shown on the two sides of the account. So I'm moving to the next part, which is that sales paid into the bank. So you have you have you have paid sales and the money is going to your bank straight up. So in that in this case, you you uh be posting this on your debit side because you are receiving money on your debit side, then October 15th. On the debit side, bank of 18,000 euros. Then you move to the next part, which is withdrew cash from bank. So this is also a typical example of contra entry. You are going to withdraw cash from the bank of 18,000 euros. So bank is giving up to cash. So what you need to do is to affect the two sides. So don't forget, withdrew cash. So cash will be receiving. You will post on the cash on the debit side because this cash is to be the bank is giving. So that is bank is giving. Okay. okay, so before that, we said paid check to white salami 40,600. To check of white salami, this is 40,600. And also, we said we look at from bank. So, we look at so cash is receiving, uh, the then bank is giving. So, you come down here 29th, 29th, cash is giving. When you catch it, uh, yeah, cash is receiving, then bank is giving. So we look at from the bank. So, bank on this part is giving. So you have to put it on the credit side. Then on your debit side, cash is receiving. So you post it under cash. 
And don't forget, we have our C, which is our contra entry. Our C is our contra entry. You have to put our your C on the two sides. You have to put your C on the two sides. And we move to the next part. We move to the next part, which is paid with this in cash, 75,000 naira. And when you pay with this in cash, the like money is going out, so you have to just go to the credit side because the money is going out. You need to cash of 75,000 naira. So that's the end of the transaction. So what you need to do is sum up all of the transactions on that bank, sum up on that cash, on the debit, and so do, do, do the same thing for your credit. So, so to do the same thing for your credit, you have to do the same thing for your credit. All right, so as soon as you do that, you have to compare the amount on your credit with the amount on your debit. Compare the amount on your credit to the amount on your debit. So in this case, after comparing this task, for 2,000 plus 13,000 plus 16 plus 18,000, you write it somewhere. Then you sum up 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 18,000, and you write it somewhere. It's obvious that this part, the debit side, is greater than the credit card. So definitely you have your balance carried down here. Your balance carried down will usually be on the past that is lower. So that is for bank. And for cash, 31, 3 plus 62, 7 plus 18,000. And compare with 16,000 and 18,000, it's obvious to that your credit side is lower. So in that case, you have your balance carried down for the two side on the credit side. So for the bank and credit fund and cash on the credit side, so you have your balance carried down. So your balance carried down will be this is for 5,750 and this is 180. And this is the balance of people. So by the time you sum up all of this, you get the total balance of this, which is 114,000. And the total sum of this is 99,000. This balance carry down is what you will be keeping. So this is balance carry down. This is the of that. Balance CP. Balance CP. This is balance CP. Balance carry down. So this balance carry down will be the amount to be taken forward to the next month. This is the amount of money that, is, that, that, that you have to make with you. For the price of 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 the the price of the price of the the price of the the price of the price of the 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 our post function of subsidiary and your ledger account. We have both books of original entry. So we we'll sub the two functions. And also the methods of recording card transaction in both books are similar. I both have debit and credit balances. You do not forget to be starting. It is just the only the only difference is that you know that you is used uh, by the main cash or why credit card is used by the credit cash and it is used to get credit card is used to record text or minor or small expense. To make the minor management and how you look at any source of you and how you ask any sources of document, you know, what kind of source of document you look at, you know, those tech documents that show that the transaction has a for Take for instance, you can say that you are paid for school fees. How do I know that you are paid for school fees? How do I see your receipt? So, uh, there are many source, source of documents which are that we part of the examples to you know, receive that receipt. And particularly, it has only one source of document. And the only source of some document I mentioned in the last class is the credit card voucher. So, the credit card voucher is the only source of documents for the credit card. Group. So, uh, I mentioned uh, the second uh, difference is the credit card voucher is the only source of document for making it in the credit card. That's why uh, the main card group has very few documents. And the credit card is used for recording the credit expense, while right? so, uh, the main card group is used for put, uh, all cash. Receive Now we have some, uh, some exercise to practice one major three types of cash flow. Then uh, if uh, we expect to post all of these transactions, we are expected to post all of them. If you have any question, you can always ask on the WhatsApp group. If you have any question, you can always ask. Please check all of this. Practice them. If you have any question, ask on the WhatsApp group. And please ensure you plan and prepare for your weekend test. This weekend test will be asking you. Uh, you will be evaluated based on your know, posting, you, your, your understanding and your knowledge about how to post. And you have to ensure that you understand the double entry principle so well. So, also, you have to practice questions to state the double entry principle and mention the difference between that group and the main 
uh, critical. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our channel and also like this video. Subscribe to our channel and be sure you come on in future sessions and always getting all of our videos. You can also follow us on Facebook at Apps Scholars, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, also follow us on Instagram, follow us on Google Street, on LinkedIn, and on Twitter. You can also reach us on our WhatsApp line. We have our WhatsApp line over there on the screen. You can chat with us or if you have any questions.